Ursula Weinke to talk about the Kuprianov collection. Yeah, thank you, David. Thank you to all of you and to ICMM inviting me and uh, let me give this presentation about this special collection in the new museum. I'm director now for five years. So, the State Museum, Natur und Mensch, that means the nature of uh, natural history and humankind, was established in 1836. And uh, today we have four buildings all in a row. And um, um, all these buildings are historic monuments. The collection is mixed. We have uh, objects from archaeology, natural history, and um, ethnology. The collection of Ivan Antonovich, Antonovich Koprianov, a Russian naval officer and later governor of the Rus Russian possessions in North America, came in 1841 to Oldenburg. In all, <clears throat> the collection includes 137 exhibits, both ethnographica and natural history objects. The collection from Alaska to Oldenburg ran through the Russian court in St. Petersburg and the kinship ties that linked the house of Oldenburg to the Romanov dynasty. Here we have a picture of um, Kuprianov. Um, the collection was assembled by him uh, in what was then Russian America, which included Fort Ross in present day California. And uh, here on this map you see um, the, the region was then Russian America, and the societies of origin are Aleut, Tlingit, Haida, and Alutiki, as you see here um, on these pictures. Um, just to give you an um, imagination uh, how the collection looked like, this is uh, one object from the natural history collections. Uh, in total, eight, uh, 48 objects. But most of the people's uh, pieces are um, ethnological objects, belongings to people, and they were collected very earlier. So we have them all dated in the time of uh, Kuprianov when he, he was uh, the governor of uh, Russian America. So we here have a so-called Chilkat blend kit from the Tlingit and a feather belt from California, both around 18, 1830. And uh, here some uh, pieces of cloth. And uh, what we see here on the right hand side is anorak and this pair of boots are um, objects uh, that were unfolded, the rest nearly 20 um, of the clothes uh, pieces are in a folded stage till now. Here we have uh, two pairs of trousers. And uh, this is a very exceptional piece, a lamellar armor made from walrus uh, ribs or walrus ivory uh, from the Inupiaq and um, as well, very old from this um, um, early stage of Kuperianov's collection. There are many, many baskets made from uh, spruce root bast. And what we, hear, uh, what we see here, this ornaments, this pattern uh, in black and golden yellow, um, they are, uh, show geometric patterns. And the use of these geometric um, patterns and natural colors um, are characteristic for early examples of these belongings. There are bowls as well, wooden bowls, and uh, here two examples with uh, animals painted on them. And uh, we have the typical um, painting in red and black, and the uh, inlays, um, you see here on the right picture um, uh, um, shells or sometimes teeth from um, animals. Um, 
Here we have um, animal shaped bowls above a stingray and below a bird, and both with this characteristic red and um, black painting. Two other bowls um, shaped uh, with uh, animal figures or um, human figures. Um, on the left hand, it's a so-called grizzly of the sea with this um, face of a bear and uh, the shape uh, and the tail of um, a big whale. And the white inlays here are otter teeth. On the right side, um, the bowl shows um, a human being and the inlays are made um, from, uh, with, uh, are made from shells. Both are painted red and uh, black, and they are very exceptional pieces, especially this one. This is um, a very early mass. Um, maybe it uh, was, um, um, Koprianov get it in Sitka, and um, it's one of the earliest preserved masks from the Tinglet and uh, with these beautiful colors and uh, the, the face on it, but we do not know what's uh, in the mouth. We, we see the holes, but we do not know what was um, original um, in these holes. Um, there are animal sculptures as well, and uh, below this uh, walrus uh, is made from walrus ivory as well and um, the bird and the fish are made um, from wood. And beside that, we have many, many um, boat models, uh, some with a person in it, like uh, you see it here. It's a man in a kayak, and um, these boat models are made very accurate and um, uh, I, I can show you, I will show you more pictures when you see the techniques uh, they are made from. And um, if you watch the person, um, he ha is wearing a hat and we have two pieces um, of uh, these hats and they look like have, uh, having the same size but um, the, the head on the left side, the painted with, uh, with a blue color, uh, has um, a length of 40 centimeters, centimeters and uh, the head on the, um, on the bottom right is only seven centimeters. So this is a model, a small model head and um, the head on the left side has a real shape for, um, for a grown up and adult person. And these uh, thing you see uh, coming out here uh, are um, hairs from a walrus beard. Um, this is one of the boat models made uh, from um, uh, animal skin. And um, you can see the uh, precise working. This, these boat models are from this to this uh, size. And um, I think they are very important to, because they show the original techniques. And uh, these boat models were in the same techniques as um, a normal sized boats. Uh, with uh, these boat models, we have a lot of um, pedals, also model pedals, small sized. And uh, on the left hand side, you see the beautiful painting of these um, pedals. And on the right hand side, the uh, model boat and um, just below a rudder. Above is a canoe made from uh, skin as well for uh, three people. And um, above is a wooden canoe. And um, it said that it is um, similar to Haida canoes. And uh, the whole boat um, is built like, like a wolf with the head and the tail. And it is uh, painted wood. Another piece, uh, very exceptional, is this hatchet. And um, 
The small picture below shows a stylized face, and this face was, um, yeah, is above. So it's, um, when you look at the hatchet, it's on the left side and uh, facing down. This is an Ulu painted wood, as well uh, red and um, black, with slate, and uh, the handle uh, shows a stylized uh, bird. This is a variety of arrows, and if you look at them, they are for different purposes for hunting, and uh, they have different uh, sizes. It's just to give you uh, yeah, a light overview. We have uh, many ropes. This is a beautiful example of a rope, and uh, most of them have um, hooks on it, so they are fishing tools, and they are um, as well very beautiful um, produced. And uh, here to um, yeah some very special um, objects as well. Um, above uh, is an axe, maybe a battle axe, and it's made from reindeer antler, and has a le uh, leather around um, uh, the handle. And uh, reindeer uh, doesn't occur in this Tinglet territory, so uh, this is ob uh, an object that must have been traded to the Tinglet. And below, um, uh, it is um, so-called a scepter, made from different materials. On the right side is um, a pair of gloves, called shaman gloves, because uh, they look like uh, bear, what is bear hands, and um, if you shake them, they rattle, make that rattling noise, and they are um, um, this object, uh, this um, yeah, things pulling around are beaks from um, from birds. And if you shake them, you have the rattling of the bird, beat, uh, bird beaks. And Kopryanov collected these gloves and the animal as well. And um, so we can um, put this together. Other objects may be ornaments or rab uh, rattles as uh, well. Um, objects from feather feather decoration or, yeah, these are not objects, they are belongings, because uh, all these uh, pieces come from everyday life. They were not produced for a market, not produced for uh, white persons. They come just, um, yeah, from use to the collection. And they brought in 1841 to the museum, in, or were brought in 1841 in the museum in Oldenburg. And um, coming back to the question of the session, what's the role of a museum in the context of colonial colonialism? Mm. The first thing for me is transparency and um, through scientific processing and digitization, I guess that helps a lot, especially 3D digitization then um, in doing so, digitization serves to allow the communities of origin to participate in their heritage stored in Oldenburg. And uh, it's an opportunity to review the collection's history as well. And we try to cooperate with indigenous, indigenous people trying to stimulate international research networks and the first step was done yesterday here on this conference and I'm hoping I can talk to many people more that helps um, yeah, um, doing research with this um, beautiful collection and helping um, to reach the uh, people, the indigenous people who produce them. 
Um, shared knowledge, I think it's another um, goal because these techniques, building a boat, boat techniques, and uh, they are very valuable uh, for both sides and maybe repatriation um, stands at the end of this project or uh, maybe a digital reunion of collections then uh, because the, um, the second part of the collections is uh, now in the Eremitage in St. Petersburg. And uh, with these two images, uh, pictures from the museum, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ursula. I think, um, Kim, we can grab a couple of minutes for questions. Yep, yep sure. I think so. Any questions? I can bring a mic to somebody. Here we go, from Estonia. More or less, it's, it's a comment. Um, uh, thank you, City Spirit Museum, and uh, and uh, and of course Anna and Miria. And I, I just do a little bit comment to just uh, about these refugees and the Great Escape in 1944, and how important it really was, because uh, a lot of Estonian after the some ordinary people, but uh, a lot of people from political stuff, from uh, writers, artists, uh, every field, they just escaped because it was absolutely, they never expect that the coming Soviet occupation will, will be pleasant or anyway they got killed or sent to Siberia and, and afterwards really it happened around uh, in 19, uh, 1949, around uh, 30 people from Estonia were sent to Siberia in the second time. But uh, the other aspect is that all these people, around 80,000 who went via Finland and across the sea, later stayed in Sweden, later traveled to Canada, Australia, United States, and uh, they kept the idea of the Estonian independence because after the war you know that uh, uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania were just simply wiped away from the map of the world. And uh, with their support, and uh, it was a great help to us when we started to gain back our independence in, in 1988. And so another thing is that uh, we still have some boats from, uh, from this great escape. And uh, we managed to took them back, one of these in, in in, I guess it was in uh, 2000 and early 2000s uh, from Gotland, and the other one, uh, and the other one we have also from Gothenburg, and now the both boats are in Seaplane Harbor in uh, exhibition. And final comment: 2019, we made an audiovisual exhibition about this team in in Seaplane Harbor, and uh, mostly about the memories just the memories of the, of the people, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just one more, please. Uh, Kevin. I want to turn around, because my question is to the audience, and it's building on Anna and Amelia's um, paper. At the Australian National Maritime Museum, we have a, um, a Vietnamese refugee boat. And it made me wonder when I was watching your presentation, how many other museums in the room have refugee boats? Isn't that interesting? I suspect there is a project to be done, online or whatever, or a publication, because the stories are all totally different, but all the same. And I think it'd be fascinating to pick out, you know, craft that represent each of you or each of these, and of course, this is only this sample of, of, our, of our sector, and to see the similarities and the stories they tell, particularly in today's world. And uh, so I just leave that as a comment. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Look, could everybody just once again thank our presenters? They did a great job with really good subjects. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so, um, I'm trying to see what time it is. So you have approximately 10